Okay folks, so we're back again with our uh, charger and uh, I've just been doing a few final hardware and software changes to it today just uh, before fitting it in the car. So <coughs> the, fir the first hardware change we've done here, so if you can see it. Is, uh, I don't know if you can see that too well in there, but what we got is a solid state relay. Um, it has an AC output side and a DC input side to it. It's just basically bolted into the chassis there. It's a 40 amp part, which is total overkill for this. And what that guy does is that it controls uh, power to the uh, fans on the radiator and to the power supply that provides the 12 volts DC to the cooling pump and that gets a signal from the Arduino um, on the control board um, that decides when the heatsink uh, temperature is above a certain point. In this case, I've programmed it for 20 degrees centigrade. That it turns on the coolant pump and fans. And if the temperature should drop below 15 C, they're turned off. And when the charging cycle finishes, they're turned off also. So that saves having the fans and cooling pump going continuously whenever, excuse me, <laughs> the um, charger is getting power. Now, the second thing that I've done then is I've installed a little interface circuit for this simple timer here. Now, this is a little off the shelf. Uh, seven day timer just bought it on um, ebay it's a chinese part i think it cost me uh, ten ten dollars and um, it gets its power from 12 volts dc and it has a normally open uh, contact on it there that the uh, timer can control it's got an internal backup um, battery that just keeps the clock part of it functioning so that even if your 12 volts isn't actually hooked up your time clock still ticks away even though it can't actually energize the contact or do anything else uh, when there is no 12 volt supply to it but it'll still uh, continue timing so it's a simple um, <coughs> as a simple way to provide uh, timing facilities for the charger and that's particularly important for me uh, because I have the dual tariff electricity and it's under half price uh, between 12 a.m. and or sorry, between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. during the um, during the enter time. So this will enable the charger uh, to start up at a predetermined time and to do a timer-based shut off after a predetermined time even if the charging cycle hasn't finished so it's a good safety feature also um, now the charger also now has the uh, J1772 and IEC 61851 uh, pilot control interpret interpretation implemented in the Arduino software uh, so it will calibrate itself to whatever power that the EV, EV uh, charging point can 
supply if it doesn't get a control pilot signal um, it assumes that you're on a normal 13 amp uh, type of socket and um, throttles itself back to uh, about two and a half kilowatts which is about 10 amps from the uh, 230 volt supply so <coughs> we've also got a little gel battery here we're just uh, this is just for providing 12 volts uh, for the time clock and for the Arduino um, but that'll be provided by the car's 12 volt ac accessory battery when it's actually installed so what I'm going to try and do we're going to try and set up the uh, tripod here and just have it zoomed in on the display and we'll go through a full charging sequence and what I've got here um, is some uh, bits basically just thrown on the bench here to construct a 32 amp um, compliant um, charging charging point we have a uh, one of these um, many keys CP boxes uh, that provide the control pilot signal and the contactors uh, contactor power and we have a just an old second hand contactor there and we have a IC 62196 uh, 7 pin infrastructure socket just so I can plug in my charging cable into that so this provides the pilot signal um, that tells the uh, <coughs> that tells the charger <coughs> how much power that it can actually draw okay so I'll go ahead and get out set up and um, hopefully go through a charging sequence okay so we got a little zoom in on the screen <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and connect the 12 volt power as normal which would be always on anyway so let's see our charger goes through the little configuration sequence and basically now idles um, until it gets the control pilot signal or it gets a Haynes power feed to it and that determines if we're in mode 3 charging or mode 1 charging so I'm going to go ahead and plug the car in effectively to the charging point which is now in the main contactor comes in and it goes through the power calibration sequence and the charger now basically idles until the timer engages and also on this timer there's a little manual button um, that would be great for uh, just ordinary charging opportunity charging during the, the daytime I'm just going to go ahead and select manual on the little timer there we go and the charger should now start up it's going to the CV phase now straight hole A and we're charging I don't know if you can see there too well but the heatsink temperature is at 11 degrees and when that gets to 20 degrees the cooling pump and cooling fans will engage so I'll just uh, leave the power on until the uh, pump and fans kick in so as we can hopefully hear 
with the exception of a little bit of home from the contactor and my and my cat um, there isn't any noise uh, coming out of the charger or the inductors or any of the other components you can hear the heater starting to kick there just because they're starting to heat up we're currently on how many one two three four five of the two and a half kilowatt fan oven heating elements and we're up to 13 degrees on the heat sink temperature 14 degrees now bit disconcerting um, having the charger on but not hearing the fans and pump on but I think it's a good uh, system up to 15 degrees now I'll be hopefully installing this little timer uh, on the, the dash of the car so it can be easily set up um, both for manual and timed charging. It's quite important um, because one of the things I'm doing is I'm uh, installing battery heaters in the car and um, they have to be powered uh, at least a few hours before the charger comes in so that the battery is actually pre preheated um, so I've seen some pretty serious performance increases with the pack heater and the cells are up around 25 to 30 degrees centigrade um, they perform very good indeed um, but when they get down below 10 de de degrees uh, there's a lot of sag and um, they just don't per perform we're coming up now on 20 degrees centigrade we should be getting our pump and fans coming in pretty soon there we go Run. Now, if this was charging our battery, it would basically continue charging um, either until, well, it would continue charging until it finished the charge. So, <coughs> In our case here, we can simply now turn off the little timer, which would simulate the uh, time period ex expiring. As we see there now, the main contactor in the EV SE is turned off, and it's uh, returned it to state B and it's now um, basically going to idle until the main bus capacitor discharges below 150 volts DC now that can take up to 2 to 3 and it's with the bleed resistor that I have actually fitted so I'm just going to stick a little bulb across it here just to speed that process up Hopefully I'll kill myself. There we go. So now it's it's now picked up that the EVSE is in state B and that the contactor is turned off and it's telling me to disconnect the charging cable. So I'll just go ahead and do that. 
the charging cable off and we're back to where we, we started from and the charger is now uh, prepared to go into its next charging uh, se sequence and uh, that's about it folks um, it's got all of the facilities in it now that I need and um, I'm just going to go ahead and hopefully the next video that we see will be installed in the car charging. Okay, that's it for now.